Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's part three. Here's my face, whatever. Let's go into the game. Solky's in a very ugly position. What, what to do? The thing that we're actually going to do is slow this down just a pinch. We're gonna zoom back. We're gonna emph emph five to put importance of all the gathered. So as we zoom back, we see that Solky is indeed going to go for the sickest of races of bases and is amazingly not going to get plus three, which is what always happens in these base races scenarios. SOS is the usual badass that he is, splitting zealots off in every which direction, killing every which base. Well, have you note this gas buildup continuing in the midst of these crises. After giving the main army the runaround, Solki pulls back his remaining forces that were originally down here in the minimap in order to try to clean this up and conserve as many of the bases as humanly possible. He's gonna get one. He's struggling in his main. God, you guys are so late. It's just, it just hurts my little tummy. There's just no party at all in my tummy. Cancel them. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. All right. So, I'd like to emphasize how this Broodlord army could have totally been like here if he had not cancelled that. But such I, such is the way that the mass expanding Zergi goes. If you don't get up the the juicy gas focus defense that you and I both know that you can totally achieve. Then uh, it's kinda hard to hang in there. So we're once again in this very low base scenario. It's 18 to 39. It's like 1.2 Protoss bases versus like, I don't know, 1.3.3 bases. <laughs> kind of has all five still up. So what's a Zerg player to do? Actually, I'm going to go back to Mega Zoomed Back Out mode. So, a kind of nifty rule that we talked about beforehand is that you might be low on minerals because you don't have a lot of drones, but with a lot of bases, you don't have to be low on gas. So, we see three going into each geyser here. We're going to see some go back into these geysers here. Not a lot of drones, much of anywhere else. Solky does some very sexy things. By the way, this this wall is actually the barrier on the map, not the uh, actual edge of the map. So first and foremost, he gets the pneumatized carapace upgrade, which I actually think doesn't finish, I want to say. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just the worst. Lost these bases, no big deal. All right. Takes the re-expand, gets the pneumatized carapace. Great. SOS is kind of pinned. Zerg's kind of pinned. Zerg's just killing off whatever he can. So firstly and foremostly, what I love about good friend Solki is we're going to see is that he hasn't really stopped producing roaches and hydras this entire time. Which kind of puts a damper on your ability to get more drones, to grow your economy, and this sort of thing. And this is where this idea of using gas as a stepping stone to other things comes in again. Solki doesn't have that much extra larva, so he's going to invest in getting very gas expensive, very efficient units, namely the swarm hosts. Shoink. I'm just going to use that as a stepping stone to begin macroing again. There's the Roach Hydra getting produced. 
Drones starting to get produced. Oh, hey, drones. Good to see you. Why do you get to be here? Well, because there's going to be swarm hosts soon. Those don't take much larva. They just take a lot of gas. Gosh, see how good these broodlords are? Can you just pretend with me if they were here? Oh, yeah, look at them enduring locusts. Mmm. Very nutty game. Hey, swarm host coming up. This, I mean, it's almost like I, I, I maybe you'd call it like a gas-heavy mass unit style from Sulky. He goes for these very gas-intensive plays, or he goes for these this high number of bases and gets all these geysers, but he's not like doing some infester based strategy he's getting like hydras and roaches and then just all of a sudden these transitions become much 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 easier i think this is like really really cool to see especially when you're knocked down to two bases to sort of swim to this and to emphasize he's not going to just go for mass swarm host which i know is totally what reddit would think oh so zerg fell behind and started building swarm host I get it. Blah. Keeps on expanding. Tense little fight. Repels it. Doesn't overemphasize the shawarma hosts. I think he actually re expands here or up there again. I don't quite remember. Hey, same focus. Lots of expansions, lots of gas-heavy things. He's going to immediately pop some dudes right back into mining gas at this expansion as his spire gets up. I think he's doing it right now. Yeah, there's the guys coming up. Load, go. Drone count, very low, 51. Gas count, very high. Corruptors coming out. I've coming out. And I would indeed describe this as the same general logic. He's taking a lot of bases. He wants lots of gas. Not a conservative spread. I'll, dude, because I'm tired, I'm just going to start talking about the way I would want to play. I'm going to talk about my own feelings. Here's the spot where if I'm low on bases and I'm sulky, I'm going to be like, dude... Oh, I don't want to expand, man. Oh, I want to keep all my bases tight and close together. And Sulky does no such thing. And finally, finally, the third started Greater Spire of the game. Oh, yeah. Very tricksy little move taking this base. Yeah. And it's kinda kinda funny the way that Sulky utilizes this, because Sulky has so many bases. And Sulky is spread on the map is so huge. He sort of comparatively spreads his things out and then he gets opportunities like this little counterattack. You're not really ever gonna be expecting a swarm host broodlording player to be doing a lot of counterattacks. Oh, this assassin. Oh my god, that's just like in Heroes of the Storm. I'm doing so great. Oh, there's a Zeratul. Oh my god, shit. Oh, how I wish you'd been here sooner. There might be losses of the bases. There might be losses of the drones at the bases. But Solki's final plans are always so gas-focused that all he's really losing is minerals. Or, in some circumstance, trading minerals in order to pick up gas. So sure, he uses the roaches and the hydras as sort of like a, a base to his soup. It's like his broth. But man, is he ever focused on the gas hard. Yeah. There's only so many times I can repeat that. You thought... Warm host free units were scary.
This is one of those games where I'm just like, oh yeah, dude, Soul Key's like the best third player in the world. Most people don't even get to play games of StarCraft like this. Uh, yeah. Woo! Alright, I think my analysis is over. I think it is. I think it is. What a badass Soul Key is, man. Hope he starts winning lots more. I don't think he's ever gotten the chance to really show the super amazing all-round play. Shows like an incredible game here, an incredible game there, and then most of the rest of the time it just like dominates or loses kind of like, oh. Also Soul Key, wow, what a thin winner. <laughs> how does SOS do this? The units lost tab. Look at this. Look at how good SOS is. Look at this badass. You cannot withstand the might of the Zerg. The power of the forest. What a game. I guess I'll take questions now. With my noisy, my noisy shirt. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna sleep in tomorrow. I'm gonna sleep until like 9.30 like a party animal. Ooh. Power of the forest. Oh. Uh -huh. Wow, no one has any questions. It was great. Why does your shirt look like the eggs from the movie Alien? Because it's Wayland Farm eggs. Do you get it? Wayland Farm eggs? Cool. How should a Protoss counter a Zerg player from Polar Bear Gaming? <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, from Wraith Dragger 12, who's transferring a message on to from Nine Monday. Why did Soul Key stop using Swarmless in his composition despite it being strong to pressure Protoss? Uh, because um, Swarm Hosts are... There's two things that Swarm Hosts accomplished in the very moment. First, they um, obviously allowed Soul Key to help stay alive and to help deal with Protoss on multiple fronts well. Soul Key was looking for a way to stay alive, so that, that's a very basic way and makes sense. Second one is that it was a very gas-heavy move from Soul Key, which allows him to spend his minerals doing other things like expanding. So that's why he got the Swarm Host then, which allows us to step to the second part of that, which is why would he stop building them? It's because Soul Key's spreading himself out so far with all his expanding. Swarm Hosts are not good at defending a big amount of different expansions. Generally, what you'll see a player do in a kind of normal Zerg vs. Protoss is have so many... So much well set up defense that he can just easily keep building swarm hosts and there's no way the Protoss player can counter and win because countering would involve running into tons of spores and spies here and draw attack nares, tons of spores and spines there. So, um, yeah, that's why it's just the spread, it's just the distance that uncover distance well. X, Unstoppable X, asked me if Tasteless is alive. Uh, as far as I know, he is alive. Uh, 
Yeah, snipe down uh, 010. Love this. this. Build seems very versatile and very powerful. It's many different possible Protoss builds. What weaknesses might it have, more generally speaking? I mean, the biggest thing is that it's just hard as hell to defend that many bases at once. Um, if you're against great players and you hold it off, you are golden. Only against the best of the best, like SOS, will is it possible, I think, to break. Um, it's just getting hit in many, many places at once. Oh... <sighs> Covert Muffin says, Day 9 is Zerg, I have a hard time establishing my 3rd and 4th expansions while also defending mid-game pushes. Could you explain a little more how Soul Key makes this possible? And the second part of it is in, uh, um, in the first game, part 3, Soul Key was able to defend with a counterattack. Uh, first game, first game, part 3? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. In th in this game, uh, Sulky is able to defend and counterattack, sacrifice his fourth base. Why the Protoss run back with his his entire army? Um, so generally, the way that th um, this build deals with it is that it gets the Hydralisks up so fast by doing the five thirty double geyser that the um, Zerg gets to be the one attacking with Hydras, which are very gas expensive, but not as mineral expensive. So you stockpile enough minerals to take the fourth, and you're the one making the attack. You're the one making the moves. And very reasonably, Covert Muffin asks, well, wait a minute. What about this during this part of the game where we see Zerg taking this fourth base? What gives? So what I'll note is that during this period of time, while um, Solki's getting up his hive, taking this expansion, he's been doing nothing but building roaches and hydras. Nothing at all. Solki's looking for a good angle of opportunity, but with this many sentries, it's kind of hard to attack up a ramp or what have you. So Solki just does a very minor swing around. This is a... A little tough move, but not that tough to make. I mean, if, if it's pretty late in the mid-game, like 14 minutes, it's pretty late. Mid-game, you know, it's generally starting around 8-9 minutes or so. At this point, Soul Key is just pulling you know, just a handful of guys, just 8 roaches and a couple of lengs, and then just holding this off. So, to, to sort of succinctly answer... Um, Soul Key's able to do this by bringing noise to Protoss with uh, super fast Hydraling pushes. And those pushes, those attacks that are going on, allows Soul Key to get his little expansion up on the backside. And in this particular game, Soul Key just has so much stuff, he's not really even going to do, do that much harm to himself by doing a small counter. I'm going to play Dark Souls 2 tomorrow, and I am also going to get some water. I'm thirsty. Thanks so much for watching.